Hey Simon, just wanted to go through uh, my bag here. Hi oh, Simon, thought I'd get involved in the uh, what's in the bag. Okay, so what's in the bag? So, start off with wedges. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new episode of What's In Your Bag. Thank you for all the support on this series. It's going well. I'm not gonna go on much. We're gonna get straight into them and start going through your bags and seeing what bargains we can find or my advice on how you can make your bag better. If you wouldn't mind leaving this video a like, subscribing if you are new, that would be fantastic. Hope everyone's staying safe and doing well. Let's get into it. Interesting bag to have a look at. This is um, from Craig Parks. Now he has no woods or long clubs in his bag because he plays at a par three course. So it's very interesting to see. He's also had his four, five, and six length, or shortened I should say, to the seven iron length. So basically they're all the same length as the seven iron. He says he hasn't lost distance and he's gained some more accuracy. And I can understand that because the longer the club, the more club head speed. However, if you're not finding the middle of the club face, then you're losing that smash factor, which is really important to note. So interesting, he's just them all down i'd love to do that experiment see what would actually happen in terms of swing weight and everything else um, but he plays off eight as part three course he will be joining a longer course now he wants my advice um on getting some woods for the bag as well as he doesn't like hybrids um how about like a ping g crossover now let's have a look at the bag the bag is quite heavy set with ping stuff it's got four to um uh, pitching wedge in the ping i25s which is like a good like oh i love the align grips on those as well they look great um, uh, let me turn the volume down. Um, wedges at the bottom, 52, 56, 60, good gapping between those. Um, so in terms of lower end of the bag, and he plays a par three course, I highly recommend, by the way, if you start the game of golf, play par three courses, just play tons of them because it gets you so good from like 140 in. I don't know how long your par three course is, but some of the holes are gonna be 80, some of the holes are gonna be like 120, and it gets you so good from that range. The greens are tiny as well, which means that you just get great control and um, short game putting. It makes sense to play at par three courses. Anyway, um, uh, love the itsy bitsy spider. Um, uh, uh, so basically, top end of bag, what are we going for? now? He obviously hasn't used woods for a long time. So there's no point spending a lot of money right at the start. Realistically, my advice, Craig, is let's get something in that bag that's gonna get you used to it. Now, Pingy crossover, I'll put some numbers up. I'd probably recommend in getting a three, um, uh, just because I think that's gonna give you enough of a gapping between your four and your three with that I'm gonna suggest in a minute. Um, uh, I love the Ping G crossover. There's no difference between the Ping G crossover, Ping G 400, or I um, think they brought out another one this year. Um, uh, is it a G700? Um, crossover um, uh, but it's just a lump of metal very forgiving um, and it basically doesn't look like a hybrid but it's so forgiving and um, uh, goes off three wood and driver why don't we just keep it within the set ping i25s you got in the bag let's just get some ping i20 um, uh, woods in the bag as well and um, uh, they're more of like the tour standard like they're not the most biggest and forgiving head but aesthetically i think it'll make the bag look great and also it's going to give you something to practice with and cut your teeth on at your new golf course i'd probably looking at your bag already i'd just go stiff flex um, a nine degree or 10 degree driver um, and then three wood as well um, a i think the bag would look awesome the driver i mean i'm not mad. you can't be spending more than 50 quid 60 quid on the driver the three wood is going to be about 40 50 pounds so 100 wood 100 pound total for the top end of the bag gets you playing gets you used to hitting a driver again maybe a couple of lessons and then maybe you have some idea of where to go from there but overall i love the bag um, keep going craig let me know how you go on this year Okay, the next one's from James, and he has two great questions here. He plays off 24, and he's recently retired from rugby. He, um, he's about 36 years of age. Um, uh, his pitching wedge is 45 degrees, and his Cleveland 52 degree wedge. Um, is that too much of a gap, or do, does he worry about that when he gets his handicap down? The other question is um, uh, drivers. He has an R11S, which is more forgiving, but only goes 220. Um, and then he has an M1 that occasionally gets 260 out of it, but then when he gets a bad shot, it's even worse. So the dispersion's worse with the longer club. Now, I'll tell you exactly why that is. Now, um, let's have a look at the bag. I like the bag. He's been building it since the summer. Um, uh, gone tailor made quite heavily, with nothing wrong with that at all. R blades, I've talked about in previous videos good starting iron for a lot of you guys. Now, let's have a look at the bottom end of the bag. Pitching wedge 52, 
that pitch emerged. I haven't seen how far you hit it, but you play rugby. I imagine you swing it quite fast. He said he swings it about 90 miles an hour. I imagine that's with an iron. I'm not too sure um, when he went to American golf last time. So therefore, pitch and wedge, you're gonna hit it one, two, five. I'm guessing. 52 degree wedge, because it's a lot more difficult to hit those kind of wedges when you start the game, tracking it, club, club face, swing path. Imagine the 52 goes 95. And the bad ones probably go about 70. So, and that's probably something to remember with your wedges. That pitch and wedge bad shot with his normal pitch and wedge, 125 is probably good, 150 is probably a bad one. However, the 52, because it's more of a blade style, which isn't what you need down the bottom end, 100 yards maximum. So he's already got 25 yard gap at best. So if he has 115, what does he take? And then if it's a bad one, 70, because you lose such a percentage. Hitting wedges like that when you start the game, so difficult. So my advice would be 48 degree wedge, in there i know that's really low lofted but they're two different wedges completely different designs one launches the ball higher less spin one spins it a lot more it's just it, just in general this is my advice I, I had two pitching wedges i had my pitching wedge in my normal set when i was playing proper golf and i had a 48 degree wedge which i even lofted down to 47 because it's the number i had one wedge that went 130 my pitching wedge went 120. get the numbers it doesn't matter what numbers you have on the bottom of the clubs guys you need a consistent gapping so i imagine there's a gap there I imagine you need another wedge. I don't know how many clubs you've got in the bag, you've got 14 there. My advice anyway, James, is get a 48 degree wedge, to be perfectly honest, because that's gonna close the gap. And then when you get better, you're gonna be able to hit that 52 degree wedge, 110, 150, not because you're swinging it faster, just because your impact factors are better. Hope that makes sense anyway. Um, uh, right, moving on to driver. <clears throat> the reason the R11S goes um, uh, more consistent, or is more consistent, I should say, and the M1 doesn't is because the R11S, even though I haven't seen your numbers, I imagine it spins more, which means it's stopping more of that slice you're putting on the golf ball. It's a 440 head he has in this M1. It's a great looking driver, by the way. Um, uh, I don't, I've never really preferred the M1 series against the M2 series that Taylor made or even brought out. Even the M3 that come out, the M5, I prefer the M6, I prefer the M4, just because I want more forgiveness. I've never messed about with um, adjustable weighting. However, you can look at the settings that he's put on it. He's put draw down the bottom there, and he's put it um, all the way to the back to high. So I imagine you have quite a low fade, which is your swing path. So regardless of your M1 or your R11S, you're going to have to sort your swing path out, which I imagine you might already know. The more you work on that, the better these both drivers are. If I, you go and play Club Champs tomorrow, you take the R11S. Always take the one that's going to be finding the fairway more. 40 yards isn't going to help your game at the moment that much. For example, if you're on a par four and you have 110 to the flag and you have 140 to the flag, I imagine your dispersion is going to be quite similar from both yardages. If you said to me, Simon, I'm so good from 110 that I put it within eight foot all the time, then okay, the M1's coming in the bag because that gamble is then worth it and we course manage around the golf course. However, I don't think at your level there's going to be a major difference. So therefore, the R11S stays in at the moment until you work on your swing path. Don't bin the M1 because you're going to swing it fast, you're going to get faster, you're going to get that club path working better. The M1's probably going to spin well for you in about a year's time. That's probably the one I'd stick with. Anyway, I would hope that helps, I hope that makes sense, I hope that makes sense for everyone else that's watching as well. Next we move on to David's bag. Now he doesn't have an official handicap, but he's just started a new society with work. Um, and he goes around about 95 around a golf course. So he's around about 24, um, 25 in terms of handicap. He bought his first set of golf clubs when he got back into the game, 30 pound off Facebook um, and a 30 pound putter. So I love that anyway. Um, uh, let's have a quick look at this 40 pound set that he got off Facebook. So he got some Nike irons there and he got a driver and it came with a six iron, MP62 in there, which is great iron. And he said he hit the six iron really well. So first of all, I love the Facebook buy. I think that's a really good start. Um, uh, However, that then got him onto, I want to get a set of Mizuno irons. He bought a set of MP53s off eBay for £120. So let's have a look, actually, let's show you the photo. So he's bought these here. They look unbelievably good. I love the look, condition's great. I think that's a great purchase. That makes sense to me um, when people buy sets like this, especially when they get into the game. Forgiving enough, yes, realistically, they're not going to be um, as forgiving and high launching as a beginner should, but he swings it quite fast and his handicap's going to come down. So I'm always in favour of people getting smaller heads when they start the game. Make it harder for yourself rather than more difficult. Right, current set. So 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, he's bought this driver for £20. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the Burner Superfast. I don't think it's the best tailor-made driver ever to come out. That being said, he's bought it for £20. So, uh, perfect. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's forgiving, high MOI, no adjustable weighting, regular flex probably too stiff, but there's probably a lot of technical issues in David's swing at the moment, so it doesn't make much difference. So I think, again, great purchase for the money that you got it from. Again, Woods, similar. He's basically built the set. I like that. I like the fact you've got similar driver to Woods. Helps with the same shaft, tempo, feeling, same era, and also um, uh, a regular flex again. Which, again, probably going to need stiffer because he does swing in it quite fast. I think you got them, again, both of those for 20 quid, if I'm not mistaken, um, David. Good purchase. So I like the thinking behind your bag. Then we have the iron set. So then he's got his MP53s, um, stiff flex, great choice in terms of shaft. I like the NS Pro. Again, at your level, a lot of beginner's level, shafts really don't matter that much um, uh, unless you've been played. If you're a 24 handicapper, by the way, I'm not talking about handicap, but if, you, if you're a 24 handicapper and you've been playing the game six months, shaft doesn't matter. If you're a 24 handicapper and you've been playing 10 years, shaft might make a difference. It's, it's not down to your level, it's down to how long you've been playing the game, the elements of your swing ever changing. Are you gonna need softer? Are you gonna need harder in the future? That's my uh, philosophy when it comes down to um, club fits. So, he wanted advice. What cheap alternatives should he have in the bag? Now, he's got a sandwich at the bottom there, which looks like, I think that looks like the cheap sandwich from the other set, I'm not too sure. Um, uh, and he gave me some yardages as well. So if we look at yardages, he's going, Simon, here's my yardages. I think all of that looks great until the 110 yard mark and then 60 yards with the sand wedge. So I would advise you to buy a set of wedges very similar to what I just said in the previous video. I'd get like a 50 degree wedge or 48 degree wedge, then get four degree um, increments from whatever that wedge is. So if you went 48, get 52, then get 56. If you go 50, 54, 58. Um, uh, because realistically, you need to practice your short game and everything else. Um, and take a bit of consideration. I'm talking maximum £30 a wedge. Don't need anything expensive, just get something with half decent grooves. Um, but overall, I think you've done a fantastic job building your starting set. It hasn't cost you a fortune, gets you around practicing. That set's gonna do you more than okay until you start getting down to 14 and below. Okay, next up, Owen. Now, Owen, hopefully I've pronounced your name right. You've been commenting in a lot of my videos going, my bag didn't make the cut, oh, my bag's not in the video again. I've had a lot of people email me, Owen. Um, uh, so there's a massive backlog in terms of when you're gonna email me and potentially I'll get to your video. However, I'm finally here to your email and all you've given me, you've given me nothing to work on. I don't know your handicap, don't know what you're trying to achieve, what clubs you want in your bag, what clubs you don't want in your bag, what potentially you're looking for. I've just got sent from my iPhone. However, we're gonna look at your bag um, uh, because you've been pestering me so much. Now, bottom end of the bag, I imagine you're a beginner golfer, you've just started, or you've been newish to the game, I should say. Um, uh, and obviously, I imagine by your email, you're quite young as well. Now, Razor Fit Callaway 3-wood. The bad boys are the driver and the 3-wood in the set. I love both of them. Um, Razor Fit, great unnamed brand from Callaway, really, um, in terms of it didn't really do that great when it came out. I think it had too much competition at the time. However, I'm pretty sure you can get some great deals on this Callaway wood. Now, in terms of his driver, this is bad boy, the R1, but in black. Again, oh, and if you put the driver in, there we go, Pat. <laughs> you love the way you're not filming the driver. Um, uh, okay, there we go. So, bad boy. I love it in black. Um, uh, in terms of a monster driver, very similar to the um, SLDR. Not the most forgiving driver in the world, very deep face, but an absolute bomb when you're connected with it. Again, you're gonna get a great deal on an R1 driver now. I'm talking like 50, 60 pounds, and he's got this bad boy 6.0 Project X shaft. So, like that there, in terms of that driver, with the same loft as today's market drivers, it's gonna go just as far. Forgiveness and sound and, and feel is gonna be somewhat suspect. However, if you just want a long bomb driver, I'm a big fan of. Got some King Cobra irons here, quite old school. I'd probably, if you're gonna spend any money in the future, first of all, wedges, second of all, upgrade your irons. I think the rest of the bag looks great. Um, I think you're gonna get more forgiveness. Um, uh, you don't even need a bigger head. I think just getting a forged head for you in the future. King Cobra didn't make great irons when they were before they were bought out by Puma, I should say. They just didn't put that much money into their um, equipment. 
And then Ray Cook putter, which is kind of a starter beginner putter, which a lot of you can get if you're just looking for a brand new putter, kind of like a starter set putter, 30, 40 pounds, brand new, I'm talking. Um, but I love a bit of blue and gold, so I think that's all good. But Owen, there's your bag. I've rated it. Next time, give me a bit more info to work on. But overall, I think top end bag looks great. I'll invest in some irons and wedges going forward. Okay, next up, Max Taylor. Max, thank you for sending your email. Now, he's just started golf um, uh, recently, or started last year even. Hasn't got a handicap. Average score is nearly 100. Um, however, bag looks good. His advice is, um, I was told I need stiffer irons with some loft. Are RSI too suitable? Let's have a look at Max's bag, shall we? Um, uh, I think his bag looks great, by the way. Um, especially for someone that started the game. Um, I'm going to turn the volume down. I'm going to let you guys, um, I'll tell you what um, uh, Max goes on and says. So I love the woods. I love the M2. Love the M2 hybrid. I think the JPX EZ um, uh, uh, driver, again, good for the moment in terms of don't change it. Basically, this is what I'm going to say with your bag. I'm going to let it play through and you guys can obviously have a look at Max's bag. Now, Max plays to about 100. Obviously, with lockdown and everything else, difficult to get practice in, etc, etc. Um, but if I look at that bag, nothing screams out at me, which tells me one thing, that if you're playing off 100, or playing to around a handicap of 28, just keep playing. Don't change a thing. Because, yes, you could change the RSI 2s at the moment. Get stiff flex, more suitable. He says um, his swing speed is about 92 to 94 miles an hour and he's been working on not coming over the top as much, not coming as steep um, and he's helped. that's helped with distance. So you can swing it fast. You've got the um, uh, speed for it. Um, however, those irons at the moment aren't stopping you getting lower. Those wedges aren't stopping you getting lower. The woods aren't. It's purely technique. And the reason I say just wait is because in another year's time, potentially you're gonna need X stiff and potentially you're not gonna need RSI 2s, potentially you're gonna need some TP irons with true lofts. So yes, they're a bit chunky, yes, they're gonna launch a high. I imagine if you catch a fly with some of those irons, it's gonna go another 30, 40% further. However, how often does that happen? How often are you duffing chips? How often are you three putting? How often are you putting your driver into the out of bounds? They're the things I would want you to work on and there's nothing in that bag at the moment. There's nothing tech like tech wise I could put in that bag and go, this is why you haven't broken 90 consistently. I'll just keep practicing once it's all over. Um, uh, send me your swing uh, and then uh, I'll give you some advice in terms of where to go from there in terms of equipment. But overall, I think bag looks more than suitable to be honest, Max. But overall, Max, keep going, keep practicing and um, hopefully we'll all be out on the golf course in no time. Okay, so the next one's from David. Now, David didn't send us a video. Normally, I just reply to your guys' emails if you've just sent me pictures or just some text. Um, but I thought I'd put this in because it's a great looking bag. And to be honest, even though it looks very expensive, to be honest, it doesn't. 2020 is not that expensive to produce. Anyway, Cleveland RTX 4 wedges. He got these RSI 2 irons with um, 6.5 rifle shafts, so about 200 euros. He's got a Titleist U500 4 iron, which I imagine is quite expensive. Um, 2 iron MMC fly high, driver and 3 wood 917. Um, and then his tailor made Spider X in chalk grey, which looks great. So I want to show you these guys, these photos, but to be honest, today's market, I don't know what you spent. I don't know if, I imagine you got club fitted. I imagine you're a very decent golfer. Well, I hope you are anyway. Um, uh, but the bag looks great, and to be honest, it's not that expensive if you were to buy that second hand. Now, the spider putter, that's expensive. The spider putter, I imagine you spend a bit of money on, but I don't mind you guys spending money on putters because that's what you should be practicing. But the bag looks money. Um, I imagine very low single finger handicapper. Love the Cleveland RTX wedges. As I say, the RSI irons, great deal. 917 woods, you're gonna be getting at like a fraction of the cost. I'm talking like 140, 150 for the driver, if that bit lower for the wood MMC fly high two iron so overall even though the bag looks about 16 to 2,000 pounds realistically apart from the putter you could probably make that bag for about 800 700 pounds something like that um, or less but I love it good work I love the bag okay the next one's Adam Knight and this is a great bag another rugby player guys you love watching the channel and um, uh, keep spreading the love through the rugby scene and um, uh, Obviously can't go on forever, playing a bit more golf, but he's used a lot of second-hand deals, bargains, and I love this set. This set is probably the go-to beginner set. It's not the most cheapest, 
but it's the best middle ground and it's going to do you well for a long time. Now he thought about getting club fitted, etc, etc, but then after a while he realised it was him, not the clubs, um, and he was starting to shank some chips. He knows that realistically with a few more lessons and playing more regularly it's going to get better. Highly agree. Adam, you again, very similar to I said to a lot of the other rugby players, you're going to come over the top because you're so heavy set and built um, uh, and you're, you can generate so much club head speed with your top half without using your lower half, you're going to shank because you're going to come over the top, you're going to be steep, you're going to get very handsy on it, but that'll go with a bit more practice. Unbelievable set here by the way, like this is a dream set, Ping G, C G Series Driver, Three Wood Rescue, they hold their value a lot guys. Now obviously the G Series now is three years old, something like that I think since it last came out, but again you're still talking like 140 for a decent driver, um, and then the Woods etc etc, however the reason they hold their value is because they're great clubs. SM, this is the 60 degree wedge you got. Um, for 50 quid, which is brilliant, great buy. I love the D setting on a 60 degree because it's got heavy bounce, which is great for a beginner, and it's gonna match up well from your sandwich in your ping set. So I don't know if you meant to do that, but you did a good thing. Um, uh, again, ping G series irons, trying to work out if they're steel or graphite. I didn't quite see there. That looks steel, doesn't it, yeah. So there's steel irons, which again, great buy. Um, uh, Ping G series drive, as I said, I think it's great. He's got mid-size grips throughout the back, and then he's got this nice little OX putter at the bottom there, which he got off another website, second-hand, and a deal. So he's bought everything either second-hand or on a deal. He's probably spent more than the majority of people would. Obviously, um, up, he had an old set, but he's upgraded. But this set's gonna last him a long time. Like, to be honest, Adam, until you get down to 12, don't change anything. And if you're gonna change anything, it's gonna be irons, because your irons are probably gonna be too high launching um, and low spinning, and they're all gonna be monsters. So the irons are probably the only thing I'd change realistically. And when you change the irons, you'll probably have to add a few more wedges in the lower end. But for where you are at the moment, till you get down to 14 or 16, or breaking, getting towards that 80 mark, don't change a thing. I think you've done a great job um, uh, with the bag. Okay, what a bag to finish up on by Nathan. Nathan plays off seven. His question is about his driver because he plays a fade. However, his big miss is this right-hand side um, slice. Um, he's thinking about getting an ex-stiffer's driver. Extra stiff, sharper as driver. Will that help eliminate the chances of a slice? Give me tons of detail. Let's have a look at the bag. I love a detail, by the way, guys. You don't have to give me this much detail, um, but the more detail you give me, the more I can understand your game. Now, his club head speed with his drive was 106. He gets about 272 altogether with his drive, um, which means that his drive is actually quite well suited for him already. Let's have a look at his bag. Hey, Simon. Just wanted to go through uh, my bag here. Um, so I play with a uh, the 2016 M2 for the driver, nine and a half degrees. So great looking driver. You all know I love this driver. Um, if it was one driver I had to play for the rest of my life, that would be it. Now I presume he's just got a normal stiff shaft in there. He's got a three wood again with a stiff shaft in there as well. Um, uh, and let's just quickly have a look through the rest of the bag before I talk about the driver advice. Now P790 driving irons. He's got, um, uh, I imagine there are hazardous shafts in there. I couldn't quite see. Or oh, interesting, he's got a steel in the three. I'll have to go back through the notes and have a look. But anyway, UDI is great driving irons. So, in three years time, when they're worth about 70 pounds, go and buy them. I know they're expensive, but if you're gonna spend 170 or whatever they're expensive for a driving iron, the P790 is the one I would buy because Forgiving, I love they have the option or a lot more options within terms of graphite shafts for them. Makes sense. Love this VR Pro combo set he has. If you want a decent blade that's gonna cost you pretty much next to nothing, go Nike. They make great blades, Nike did. They look great, they felt great. Um, uh, again, with the blade side of it, and to be fair, even Vapor Pro, like Vapors, Great irons, um, uh, so Nike actually made some really good irons back in the day, and because they don't make them anymore, you can actually get some really good deals, because not many people actually think about Nike in terms of clubs anymore, um, because obviously if anything goes wrong, well, mind you, they're all out of date now anyway. But I love the Pro Combo set, he's got some Vokies down the bottom there, and he's got this lovely Odyssey putter, um, uh, blade putter, which again, he gets on really well with, and he says, I don't, I'm not gonna change it. Heavy amount of wedges at the bottom there, which I would expect from a single figure handicapper. So overall, 
I love this bag. I think the bag looks great. I think he's done a great job of setting it up. There's some great deals there for you guys if you're thinking about swapping out. He's got this limited black Odyssey putter, which again, he says um, does the job. He can't see it coming out of the bag anytime soon, um, which is makes sense. At the end of the day, if you've got a flat stick that's working for you boys, don't change it. Now, his advice with the driver, the opposite. Well, not the opposite, because you've got a decent club head speed. You've got 106 with your club head speed, but your slice um, is a bad shot. Now, if you get stiffer shaft, that club face isn't gonna close as much as it already is. And the reason you're getting a slice is because that club face is just too open at impact. So if you get a stiffer shaft, it means that all of a sudden that club face isn't gonna shut as much, which means it's gonna actually give you worse, um, uh, a much bigger slice, because that club face is just gonna be even more open at impact. Now, I'm not saying get a stiffer shaft, um, a fle more flexible shaft, because ideally you could get like a ladies flex club, it closes even more, but then your numbers are gonna be out because it's gonna spin too much and launch too high. Obviously ladies flex is a massive um, other side of the um, spectrum. But what I am advising is this. Um, uh, you have to just technically work on your club face. So I would work on potentially grip, your left wrist position in the top of your um, um, uh, top of your backswing, anything that's gonna affect your club face at impact, even towing the club in at address is gonna sort that fade out because I've seen your numbers you're swinging at 106, your ball speed's at 147, and you're totaling about 272. So realistically, I know your launch and spin rate is gonna be pretty much about there. And you say it to myself in the video, it's a bomb. So the number's already good. So realistically, we don't wanna change the shaft. We don't wanna change the loft on the driver. Um, uh, we just need to get that club face pretty much on an average four degrees more closed. So four degrees is next to nothing, but it's gonna stop um, yourself having like that slice off to the right that's causing you to go OB or whatever, and it's actually gonna get you to have like your good shot in the fairway, potentially a few pull shots, but then that slice is now right-hand side rough, which means that, okay, I'm just gonna take one more club out of the rough, get it on the green, take my medicine, rather than having that destructive shot in the game. And we are talking about four degrees in terms of club face closing to stop that slice that you're already getting at the moment, which, Sounds nothing, but that is why this game is so difficult. But overall, mate, Nathan, I think the bag looks um, phenomenal. Um, I wouldn't change the shaft at the moment. I'd work on a tiny bit of technique work, and I think you'd pretty much be there. Right, guys, there you have it. Thank you again for watching a What's In Your Bag video and the support that you're giving these. Um, I really do appreciate it. If you do want to send a video in to me, it's quite a big backlog at the moment, um, but it's sasgolfacademy at gmail.com, um, and just type it What's In Your Bag and give me as much information as you can, and potentially video it as well will be fantastic. Guys, see you later.